the people have spoken. And for our next commander, we have the Baron of Bribery himself, Guafa Hazid, Profiteer. Indeed, and as promised, this is the most annoying deck to play against that I have made in Commander Town. Lots and lots of issues for my opponent to deal with, and more than likely not deal with. I tested this deck about 15 times, won every game except for two, and both of those two losses were due to me not getting more than three mana the entire game, one due to an ill-timed Armageddon, and the other just to a straight-up land destruction deck. Uh, but it won every other game, and it won them very efficiently and very quickly. I think uh, at least half of the wins were less than turn six. People just don't like to play against a lot of the cards I am spouting forth. Speaking of those cards, let's go over them in the Guava Hazid deck tech. Or I should say the Guaffle House deck tech because that is this deck's name. I've got the basic lands. I've got the mana, the special mana getting lands. And I've got the special, not really only mana getting lands over here. You've seen these guys all before in all my other videos, so I'm not going to bother explaining them really. <clears throat> but uh, suffice to say, Mystifying Maze and Maze of Ith are great in this deck because of uh, Crawl Space. You know, if I have nothing else besides Crawl Space and a Maze of Ith, then I'm only getting hit by one thing, guaranteed. Got a bunch of artifacts to fix my mana or to ramp me up. And then I've got the column that is the uh, don't attack me, no, no, thank you very much column. Uh, Tafari's Molt, choose a color, they can't attack, people can't attack me unless they, uh, they are flying. Orification, one of my favorites. Uh, anytime something damages me, they just become a wall. It's as simple as that. Uh, but it's, uh, it's pretty swell. People don't like to attack me when their guys are just going to become walls. Dissipation field. If you damage me, then you go back to the hand. So they, the, the opponent has to redo his creature, uh, army. This is a very interesting picture I just noticed right now. She's got like a weird insect hat on. No, that's neither here nor there. Uh, crawl space, as mentioned before. Uh, fantastic. Love this little goblin tinkerer. Uh, no more than two creatures can attack me on a given turn. What is not to love? Uh, ensnaring Bridge, great in the late game because I'll only have a couple cards in my hand in theory. I only have two ways of refilling my hand. And, you know, I do it rather than just let Ensnaring Bridge uh, keep them back. Unless, of course, it's a life or death situation. And then Propaganda. There are a bunch of cards just like Propaganda, but with all these other ones over here, uh, I feel like it would be redundant to include a lot of them. So stuff like Ghostly Prison, that's that's falling by the wayside in this deck. We're just sticking with Propaganda. And then I've got my single target removal. And by removal, I mean I can sometimes take it as well. Volition Reigns and Treachery are both in this deck. So I can take things. As well as Spin Into Myth, my target, Get Rid of a Commander spell. As well as uh, Return to Dust, the very best artifact and enchantment removal single spell in white, I do believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I will include it in this deck. Then we've got Oblivion Ring and Detention Sphere for those artifacts and enchantments that I do not have Return to Dust for. And Sword to Plowshares and Path to Exile for single target early game creatures. I say single target early game creatures because late game I've got a bunch of board wipers. Six of them. Austere Command, Final Judgment, Terminus, Hallowed Burial, Supreme Verdict, Martial Coup. Wonderful. My opponent could keep shitting out the creatures and I will keep wiping them away. Then I've got my miscellaneous pile, Sphinx's Revelation, I mentioned before as one of the two ways of refilling my hand. Great card, not much to say about it, you know, you don't want to 
You don't want X to be any less than four if you can help it. Entreat the Angels, find Miracle, a late game, or, you know, get yourself a couple of Angels otherwise early game, early-ish game. Staff of Nin, beautiful card. I feel like Staff of Nin is the absolute best commander card to have come out in Magic 13 core set, and I think it will be a staple in many of my commander decks to come. It's wonderful. It's not that tough to get to six mana usually, and it's wonderful to get another card at no drawback. Looking at you, black cards. So, yeah, Staff of Him, fantastic. And you know what? Pinging takes care of phantasmal images. Future Sight. You've seen me play this card before. What's not to love? Factor Fiction. Uh, I have two Factor Fictions, if you count Jace. Who doesn't love choices? I know I love choices. Cryptic Command, one of the two counters in this deck. Cryptic Command just has so much going for it, I couldn't not include it. Uh, I wanted to make a deck with a blue deck with very minimum amount of counters, and this is the only thing that can hard counter something in the in the entire deck. But it's necessary. There's there's too much going on with Cryptic Demand. I, I can't I can't say no. Just look at that wonderful blue bottle. Vettelkin Orrery. This is a new addition to my Commander library. But it seems like a decent tef uh, Teferi uh, that uh, I would like to try out. I th and it's uh, harder to remove than Teferi, in theory, as well. Luminarch Ascension is obviously fantastic in this deck because Guafa Hazid and this column keeps my opponents from attacking me. So I'm getting those little counters on this Luminarch Ascension, and I'm getting the Angels subsequently after that. Remand, the other counter, but not a real counter in this deck. Goes great with Isochron Scepter to really piss off my opponent while not technically get it, putting the card into the graveyard. Pollen Lullaby, this is here as well for Isochron Scepter because it could prevent uh, every, uh, every combat phase from really doing anything. And also there's a chance that the creatures won't even untap. Dawn Charm, I really just wanted another Pollen Lullaby for the Isochron Scepter, and Dawn Charm just seemed to fit the bill good enough. So there it is. Not to mention, I can, if I really push comes to shove, I can regenerate a creature. Uh, Isochron Scepter, yep, yeah, for, mainly for these three cards, plus uh, Enlightened Tutor. Get a bunch of, I have a bunch of artifacts and enchantments in this deck. It is... It would be crazy not to play Enlightened Tutor. Enlightened Tutor gets them all. Then I've got my creature pile in order of mana cost. Jin Jitaxis, Core Augur. Usually I would never play a creature like this because it is a... It is a, hey, time for you to concede, creature. I don't think I have ever played this card in my entire life without the opponent conceding within 10 seconds afterwards. And, you know, vice versa. When an opponent casts Jingatixius on me and I don't have anything really going on, you, you, you concede. He's such a piece of shit. Look at him. He even looks like a piece of shit. Granted, if this thing came out of your asshole, you would have a bloody rotten time. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, onward. Blazing Archon. Creatures can't attack you. Hey! That fits with the theme of the deck, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this, uh, this creature was made for a Guava Z deck. And so he's included. Avacyn, Angel of Hope, let us make everything indestructible before we board wipe. Phyrexian and Jester, it's like duplicants, but I always play duplicants, so let's try the Phyrexian and Jester. Angel of Serenity... Utility creature, as well as a you know five in the air, it's uh, pretty pretty damn good. 
Sunblast Angel, another board wipe in angel form. Spiria, Supreme Judge, when I created this deck in my mind's eye, this was the first creature I thought of. I wanted to have a bunch of flying guys who had passive effects, if possible, and Hesperia was the very first one that I could think of. A uh, brand new creature in return to Ravnica. Draws me a bunch of cards if people attack me. Granted, depending on what else I have out, there isn't exactly going to be a lot of people attacking me, but just in case they do, I'm still getting a card out of the deal. Frost Titan. I was, I was trying to decide between this and Sun Titan, and I just think that I don't have enough I could get back with Sun Titan for him to be useful. So Frost Titan it is. Frost Titan is just, I mean, look at this Frost Giant, you son of a bitch. He, he's just always useful. There's, there's nothing conditional about him. Consecrated Sphinx, Sphinx was the second creature I thought of with as a flying beastie with a passive effect. Draw me damn cards, Consecrated Sphinx. Draw me damn cards. And World Queller, uh, another way for me to get rid of uh, unfortunate artifacts and enchantments. And I guess creatures, if, if my opponent has a bunch and I have a few I don't mind getting rid of myself. But really, he's here for me to name either, like, Planeswalker, or Artifact, or Enchantment, or what have you. Uh, in my testing, I've actually never drawn him, so I don't know if he's great, but I assume he is. Blinding Angel, sure. Let's have a, a reoccurring combat phase skipper. Why not? Windborn Muse, maybe she belongs in this pile because she is propaganda with wings. Sour of Temptation. Uh, let me steal something. Sure, why not? Love me some Sour of Temptation. Magus of the Moat. Creatures without flying. Can't attack. This is a card that I won't always play. Sometimes I won't have any flying dudes. And I won't want to play Magus of the Moat because I won't be able to get in myself. But if I do, if I even have a single flying dude, Magus of the Moat makes things wonderful. Grand Arbiter Augustine, the trolliest of trolls. Look at this bastard and his and his little advisor, who, might I add, is also a bastard. Yeah. This fatty is responsible for many a concession. So I'm some lakrum, fix my mana. Kira, great glass spinner. She protects all my creatures from single tar target removal. And uh, I've got a lot of creatures that do stuff that I would want to protect. So she is pretty essential to a deck like this. Grand Abolisher, another troll creature. My opponent can't cast spells or abilities or do anything really on my turn. Fog Bank. Fog Bank uh, plus Crawl Space is another great combination because Fog Bank will keep out one of the two creatures that are allowed to attack me forever. Weathered Wayfarer, fix my mana. Not really much else to say about this guy except that is the ugliest looking horse goat I have ever seen and I've seen a lot of horse goats in my day. Then finally I have my three planeswalkers. Tamiyo obviously because she's the best and just wins games by herself oh i love you damio and i've got jace architect of thought not so much for his plus one ability but his minus two ability is fantastic always and his minus eight ability in commander is is uh, also great it's probably one of the best, like, super ultimate abilities a Planeswalker has, specifically for the Commander format. And there's a lot of choices, you know, that I can get with it. And then there's Gideon. I thought I'd try out. I liked Gideon in Standard back in the day. As you can see, I purchased him back in the course at number 12. Got a lot of use from him out of Standard. I uh, had a good time with him, and uh, I think if any deck could use him, it would be this one. If any commander deck could take advantage of Gideon Jura, it would be this one. I have a 6-6 six, six 
when I need it. Uh, after I, uh, I got my opponent locked down with all the board wipes. And uh, if my opponent has something super annoying, I could just destroy it if it attacks. And uh, yeah, I can force those same creatures to attack as well. So, there's, uh, there's really nothing to uh, dislike about Gideon, and I believe he has a fit here. Time will tell, however. Time will tell indeed will tell for everything that has to do with this deck if any of these cards are shall we say not as good as they seem as i said i've played about 15 games but a good 10 of these cards i still have never ever ever seen so the deck may evolve as we play games and uh, i post them on the youtubes and we shall see it evolve together. So without further ado, let's get to some battles.